on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. Quite frankly, I've actually had Amazon employees reach out and say, hey, can you do a demo? Because I've heard that your visualization is really good. And we've walked through it and they go, I've never looked at our data like this. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome. It's The Self-Publishing Show on a Friday from the United Kingdom. This is James Blatch. And Mark Dawson. Hello. (laughs) Mark, the pub's open in 12 hours. 13 you've been hours. Idiot, you've been an idiot to go in one of them. No, thank you. Well, it's... Uh, look what look what happens. Look what's happening in America at the moment. Now, bars are open and... Um, no, not a good idea. Not for me. Oh, good. Be more space for me. They're all, they're all booked up around here because you have to book a table in the garden. Same. Yeah, yeah same so here. So you can't get in anyway at the moment. Um, the weather's rotten here. But uh, I like the fact that when they do legislation... On a date, it, it obviously kicks in at midnight when legislation works, but they've amended this particular bit of legislation, so or whatever it's called in Parliament, so that it starts at 6 a.m. in the morning because they didn't suddenly occur to them quite late on. A load of pubs will open at midnight tonight. Not great. So, oh, yes, anyway, <laughs> it's a landmark moment in the history of coronavirus, um, bracing ourselves for the second wave. Possibly, yes. I'll be, um, I'll be staying at home. That's for sure. Reading. Well, actually, um, yeah, I've got, I've bought quite a few books today. I actually spent three thousand six hundred pounds on four hundred of my own books. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I tell you what. Let me welcome our Patreon supporter. We have one this week uh, to welcome. His name is Gary Roma. Gary, thank you very much. He's been to Patreon.com forward slash self publishing show to support this show and get lots of goodies and access to training in the process. You can do that as well. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about one thing before we get on to our... We're going to talk about Amazon ads and a bolt-on service you can get that sits on top of your Amazon ads campaigns to help you run them, make life easier, give some time back, and hopefully more sales. That's coming in a moment. But yeah, you have uh, been launched... Well, this in the last couple of months, you've launched the hardbacks distribution into kind of main, mainstream supermarkets. And is it is it gone into WH Smith? If you're in America, you won't know what that means, but it's like a high street book Some. retailer. Because I was looking yeah, today, couldn't some. see it in my local one, Huntington, but it's a very small one there anyway. So yeah, it's they didn't take many. They 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 were a little bit disappointing, but you know it's also coronavirus and all that. So there's lots yeah. of reasons why they didn't. But no, it's mainly mainly the supermarkets. Um, so yeah, it's been well, it's not more than less than a couple of months. It's actually a week. It's been out for a week. Um, well, it was a week ago yesterday. So um, about ten days. So it's been. Um, yeah, it's been interesting, me driving around the southwest last week, failing to find one. Um, but then, that's just how those stores, they don't, they're don't they not all required to stock the book. And, and I've had plenty of um, uh, pictures from readers and actually some SPFers as well and family who found copies of, um, of the book in, in various places around the country. So it's definitely selling. We know that we are at the moment or on Wednesday... It was at number thirteen in the uh, Sunday Times bestseller list, which is so not that hard to do, and it sold about thirteen hundred copies, I think, to get to that kind of level. So that's that's quite good. We'd we'd like to get to the top ten. So the last couple of days have been pretty interesting. Um, I I I haven't offered the opportunity to any of my non UK readers to get a copy of the book, and I was we've been trying to think of ways that we could do that in a way that would count those sales as uh, as tracked sales for the chart and um i sent out an email yesterday asking you know uh, people outside the uk if they would like a signed copy and i had about 400 responses saying that they would some wow. people you know wanting five copies some wanting you know several wanting multiple copies so it, it would have we were about 300 off the top 10 on Wednesday and um, I, I think probably about about 400 people have indicated that they're interested which if everything else stays the same provided you know provided those none of the books ahead in the slots from 10 to 12 suddenly picked up speed um, and sold and, and 
uh, kind of um, widened the, the the 300 gap to where I was, um, we, we may have vaulted them. So the, the kind of the trick today has been um, how do we get the, how do we get the books to count, and then how do we get them? How do we take payment, and how do we get them shipped? And so I, I took a, an executive decision at about 12 o'clock. I went into the local ch- children's bookstore here in Salisbury called Rocket Ship Books, and I said. Um, would you be interested if I placed an order for 400 hardbacks um, of my own book? And they were like, yes, of course. So they, they got a margin. Um, they, they made a couple of quid on each book. They they got 45% off the list price. So they were buying them. That was that would have been their margin. Um, they they added two pounds on that. So they made two pounds per book. And and I think as far as we can make out, those sales will track. We don't, we can't say for sure, um, but we think they will. And, and what we're going to do subsequently um, in order to get those books out to readers is um, I have, I've been doing a project on my website for the last couple of weeks, which will be adding a store to it where readers can get any of my um, print books. Um, so including the hardback, get a signed copy um, and they can, they go to, there's a WooCommerce store integrated in it. There they can pay through Stripe. Um, Stripe takes the money. I get pinged an email with a dedication and their address. Um, and then um, I'm probably going to hire someone actually to work full time for the business in the next week or two. And one of her jobs will be to make basically make that work. So tell me what I need to do. Pick up the signed books, package them, take them to the post office, send them off. So. Okay. We'll see. You know, it's fingers crossed that you know. I just it was yeah. It cost three thousand six hundred quid to to buy those books, which felt very um, mm. <laughs> it felt very um. What's the word? Kind of uh, well, buying your own book was oh, was kind yeah, of a bit grandiose. Yeah, offset against the income you get from people buying it for you. So the exercise yeah. wouldn't have been profit making for be, you, I assume. But it'll be break even, I think. Yeah, this one will be breaking because the 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 hardback is is quite carefully priced thing is though with it's shipping shipping is ridiculous mm. to ship a hardback to the united states how much do you think that costs have a guess um well oh, by by your voice i'd say it's going to be more or are you going to tell me it's 10 quid or something keep going oh really <laughs> eight 18 pounds 18 pounds to send it that's kind of you know normal airmail so not not extravagant you could pay more um and then the kind of the um surface mail so the one that would take the longest the minimum on that is is eight pounds so it's it is really expensive and you know the the actual shipping will cost more than the book does which that's just crazy that is you know, crazy. But there doesn't seem so to be any way around it what you need is a va in the states who you can create off a i mean mm. if you send stuff by a uh, ship i mean those what are they called containers this that's the cheapest way of shipping <laughs> stuff you get space in a container <laughs> i send them what ten thousand books it doesn't have to be a whole container. You can get a piece of a container. And occasionally they fall yeah. off ships and sink to the bottom of the Atlantic, but generally they're okay. Uh, anyway, this is ob- obviously a bit of a one-off, and you're going to be very frustrated if it turns out that this was not a returns shop that counts for the um, the list. It, it is. It, it is. is. De- we've cleared that. It is definitely a return shop. But the, 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 the chart runs from Sunday to Saturday. So that sales from last Sunday to tomorrow, as we record this Saturday, are counted. It's just with the virus and all that, you know. It's, and apparently, the, the person who compiles the chart is on furlough. Right. So we've just got to hope that those those sales track. There's nothing I can do. I can't. I can't make them track. They think the bookshop was confident, and gardeners, who are the distributors, um, spoke to the bookshop and said, as far as we're concerned, they are tracked. So we'll see. You know, I, I won't be able to tell. Probably, well, I probably will be able to tell, but I can't do anything else. How did you know you were thirteen? You get um, on Wednesday. You get a half weekly report. That's an industry report. Is that's not published anywhere? No, no, it's industry. Yeah, you probably got to subscribe to it. So that's Nielsen's who put that out. Okay. Uh, well, that's an interesting exercise. Old school. You've gone old school. What What's interesting about yeah. this whole process is is those lists right the i know you've said in the past you're not that bothered about it and i think it'd be a nice thing to do and, and it's part of a strategy view if, if you could sort of raise visibility into more mainstream areas which will feed back into your your book sales where you make the profit on amazon and, and the other retailers i understand that but now i've mentioned these lists in the past you've said well it doesn't really matter and it sort of does and it doesn't i think they do matter because for most of our friends 
who aren't immersed in the indie world of publishing, they open the paper or they go online and they see the top 10 um, Sunday Times lists and they see those stickers and it means something to them about the books that people are reading. And it does annoy me that in a week where you'll get, I don't know, some great authors like Martin Cole or whoever at number one and, uh, and all those similar authors, Joanne Harris or the rest of them in that list. And then there'll be LJ Ross and you nowhere to be seen because your sales because of an accident of the way the system's evolving, don't count. But that makes no sense because people are buying your books and reading them. It should be reflected in a list that people look at as being the Bible of who's reading what at the moment. Well, the Amazon charts do that. I mean, just on Amazon, so it's not just... there is You may not know this. There's a a facility now called Amazon Charts, which take into account Kindle unlimited page reads, sales. I think they also take into account listens as well. so it collates, and you know, Amazon is the biggest bookstore in the country by a gazillion miles. So that is that's a much more relevant um, metric or benchmark than the Sunday Times bestseller list. But my and, neighbor doesn't you know, look at I, that. My neighbor opens the paper on a Sunday. I know, I know that's just how it is. But that, that's it doesn't bother me that much. I'm not. I won't be that bothered if I, I'll be annoyed if we miss it by fifty. But I won't. I won't be that annoyed. I don't think it is that important. The, the publishers are very keen, um, mm. but then they they are, they're approaching it from a slightly different angle that I I do. I, I I would rather say, you know, we can say, you know, on the on the cover, three million copies sold. You know, that that to me it, it would be a more powerful piece of social proof than Sunday Times bestseller because you know, I suppose not everyone would know this, but you can you can be on the Sunday Times bestseller list with you know. Well, you mentioned Louise. Look, Louise would have sold enough yesterday mm. to to rank on the Sunday Times bestseller list, I would imagine. Um, and I, I probably would too. So, you know, we, we know that. We know, you know, what the numbers are across the different areas of the industry. As you say, and you're right, the, the general public won't really realise that. But, you know, things are changing. But you know, yes. I'm also quite competitive, as you know, and, yes. and I don't. I like. I've never seen a challenge I don't like to beat. So no. you know, we'll we'll see if we. Um, I can we, see we that. Can do that. It's gripped you. Um, yes, I just. I do think it's it's currently a little misleading when you look at that chart. It is not a true reflection. If people think that's a reflection of the books that are selling in the UK at the moment, they're being misled, and they don't understand. So there should be a caveat at the bottom saying the biggest retailer that people buy books from. Is not included for all the ebooks, which is how most you know, a lot of people read that consume their books. I guess yeah, if print I guess books the print, print books are, are, counted. are counted because it's the ISBN system, isn't it? But yeah. But then I think I think the problem is probably back with Amazon, who are going to be reluctant to ship out to all and sundry their sales figures every week, which is effectively how the what you'd get from the ISBN Maybe. returns for ebooks. That's probably an issue here. Otherwise, they'd do it. But anyway. Anyway, that's an interesting area. Uh, yes, as I say, old school. So Sunday, by the time this goes out, this all would have been done. People will have to Google. Well, it'll still be the live chart, I guess, if it's next Friday. Yeah, I won't know until Tuesday. No. nine ninety nine a month, I think, is the Sunday Times subscription online, if you're around the world. But they have a very good puzzles page, <laughs> which I do love. Yes. Good. Okay, anything else uh, been going on in your world this week? No, I don't think so. That's been that's been my main focus is um, you know, trying to figure out ways to get books shipped, which is not normally something that would detain me for very long. But you know, it's that's been an interesting puzzle. So yeah. We'll see how it goes. So I'll let you know next week. Good. Okay. Well, look, our interview today uh, is with Presters on. We've mentioned, I think we probably mentioned Presters on a couple of times already. It's a service that's been around for a little while. Mark started talking to them here a year or so back and they are a service for people who are using Amazon advertising. They started as a service for people using Amazon ads to sell little black widgets and caravans or whatever people sell on Amazon, everything. Um, But they've been very, very interested in authors and they started talking to people like Mark a a year or so ago. They really got their act together in the last 12, so how long? Four years. Four years ago, okay. But they've really got their act together. At least, yeah. In the last six months or so where they've started to properly make some changes to the platform, um, really turn their attention to authors. Uh, We've got to know them a little bit. They're a great team, really fun, uh, very flexible. They've got a good product. I think it's still in its, uh, from an author point of view, it's in a development stage. So they're very keen for people to give them feedback. 
I've been using it, you've been using it. And I think the first thing we could both agree on is it saves you time because the Amazon Ads platform can be a bit fiddly to extract all the data that you need in various reports to make your decisions and go in and make the changes. It, it, it smooths that process completely. But I'm going to let a man called Dirk uh, tell us more about the platform. Uh, he is based in New York, like a lot of these companies. I think it's probably our work from home even before coronavirus affair. But Dirk is one of the brains behind the, uh, the system as it develops today. So let's hear from him and then Mark and I will be back to talk about our experiences with Prestazon and a code for you to use to get a trial to see if it's going to work for you. This is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. So Dirk from Presto's on. Uh, hey Presto Wizards, look at all this. We've got it's magic. There's magic yeah. in the room. I've got to stay true to brand, you know. Yeah. But it is uncomfortable, so we'll we'll just you get it at the very beginning, and then we'll move away from it. I, I think you know wizards would wear that when they're out, formal wizard wear. But now we're we're riffing about the the magic that you do. You can be a little bit less formal. This is casual wizardry. Yeah. We're not you know not formal We've right now. Dialed it down a bit. Okay, so yeah, presto, hey, presto. By the way, before we get into this, Presto's on. Is Presto as in Hey Presto? Is that where the name comes from? Yeah, exactly. It's you know. Presto and then Amazon. And if you look on the site, it's all, you know, our branding is the top hat with the, the wand and, and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Superb. Okay. Well, look, I've been using this product for a little while now. So uh, we are going to talk about some of the nitty gritty, but I think we should start big and perhaps you just tell our audience what Prestazon is. Yeah. So Prestazon is a, a Amazon PPC management tool. Um, and what we do uh, really kind of breaks down into three different buckets. Um, we have our analytics uh, to kind of show you what's going on in your account. Um, you know, the common phrase I use uh, and have been using my whole career is what gets measured uh, improves. And so, you know, you can't improve things unless you can see what's going on. Um, and so our analytics is really just best in class. It gives you really unique viewpoints um, into what's going on. And then the other two prongs are our bid optimization. Um, and so we will manage your bid based on your ACOS target on a target level. So on a keyword, typically keyword or ASIN target level. Um, and then finally, our keyword migration rules. Um, and so those will actually move keywords into different campaigns um, or ad groups based on your stipulations. Um, and so what those all combine to do is basically it's designed to not just optimize your account, but really just give you back time. Um, you know, we want to do 90% of the boring stuff. And so then you can go in and you, we still want you to tweak. We still want you to do your account manager magic. Um, but we just want to take away most of the boring stuff. So then you only have to worry about that, like 10% of optimization. Yeah. And some background for people who aren't using the Amazon ads yet, it should be said the platform's hugely important to lots of us, but it's not a great interface. It never has been its strong point, the Amazon ads platform. So I can see you felt the pain points of people using it. Yeah, absolutely. And our, our main goal is really to be a higher level programming language that's kind of an overlay on top of Amazon. So, you know, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, that you talk about is how, you know, you don't really like to use the Amazon bid suggestions because you're not sure where they're coming from and things like that. And so we want to have an option that A, is a little bit more catered to your account and B, is a little bit more transparent. So we're showing you whenever, for instance, we make a bid suggestion, we're always going to show you the data behind it and the reason behind it, which is not something you generally get when you're looking at Amazon. So, OK, let's look at the platform uh, in a little bit more detail. The uh, the first thing you come into is the campaign manager and you do get this op this this one option there that stands out straight away is bid automation, which you mentioned at the beginning uh, and somewhere in the settings, I think it's in the settings, you set you set your desired ACOS, right? And ACOS, we should say for people who don't know, uh, is basically whether you're making a profit or a loss uh, on a campaign. So 100% is a break even point. Below 100% is good, above 100% in theory at least, there's another very important point to make for authors in a moment, uh, but the uh, uh, above 100% is in theory a loss on your campaign. So you set that, now that seems to me a global setting across all your campaigns. So you can do it in both ways. You can set it on the profile level on uh, 
you know, in the profile settings. So then that would set the default for all of your campaigns. And then in the campaign manager, you can also set it on the campaign level. So if you've got different campaigns, you know, for instance, for different books that have different ACOS targets, you can set those on that level. And then the actual automation works on the target level. So every individual keyword will be evaluated individually and try to track towards that ACOS target. Okay, so I can see that now. It's blindingly obvious. Despite <laughs> the fact I didn't notice it before, I could see the uh, in the settings you set your ACOS target, but there it is, there's a little pencil next to the individual campaigns that I can change. Now that is important, uh, I can tell you straight away, because the ACOS I would aim for for book one in a series can be a lower ACOS because of read through than the box set, for instance, where you need to be really making a profit on the campaign. So I would absolutely would be changing that there. So the one thing I was uh, I was hinting at, which you I could see you nodding away, is that for those of us who make money through Kindle Unlimited, that's not reflected in sales on the dashboard, and we have to take that into account. So for instance, I was talking to. Um, uh, a couple who ran, two sisters actually here in the UK who run very successful. They've just had their first $50,000 month. They started only 18 months, less than two years ago. They're doing brilliantly. They write books every week. Uh, they're doing so well. And typically their Amazon ads platform, like mine, has never shown a profit. It never looks like it's showing a profit. And that's because yeah. they're big KU people. Uh, and read through, of course, is hugely important. Neither of those are reflected in the Amazon ads dashboard and they're not reflected in Presters on either because of course you are taking that data straight from Amazon ads. So how can authors adapt their strategy bearing this in mind? Yeah, so that's absolutely true. And and if Amazon starts providing more of that data through the API, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious from us being here, um, you know, supporting authors is a big initiative for us. And so as we get more data, um, you know, we will try to integrate that as quickly as possible. But to answer your question, you know, that's the nice thing about being able to set your ACOS target is even though, you know, for most of our product, uh, you know, physical product customers, they set their ACOS target and it's an actual goal that they want to get to. Whereas for authors, because you have this other sort of venue to get revenue, um, you know, in a different place, you can just set a higher ACOS target. And so whatever you're comfortable with, if, you know, you know that at 120% or 100%, you're actually going to be getting enough revenue from the read through rate, then you can set it at that point rather than setting it at, you know, 30%, which is your actual, you know, might be your actual uh you know, breakdown yes. when you when you bring in your read through revenue. So you can sort of do it that way. Um, and I know that that you're big on benchmarking. And, and so it just kind of goes hand in hand with with how you talk about doing benchmarking externally outside of the platform. You can basically use that benchmarking and then apply it to um, your ACOS targets within the platform. Yeah. So it seems to me there's a gap in the market for, for someone to come up with that formula that feeds in what you know is your break-even point and translates that into an ACOS. So I know that we sell the books that Mark, Mark and I market sell. Uh, they get 60% of revenue through KU, 40% through physical sales. Uh, and I also know roughly what the read-through rate is. So I reckon with those elements, I could come up with the point at which a campaign is no longer profitable based on its ACOS. So I'll have to sit down with a pen and paper and a spreadsheet at some point to work that out. But that's, that, yeah. but that's the flexibility of this platform is you can then adjust your ACOS and all your data you're getting back shows you whether it's performing or not. Precisely. It's even though we're not getting all the data, it's flexible enough that you can sort of work around that limitation. And then again, ideally, you know, eventually we'll get that data and we'll be able to integrate it into the calculations directly. But happy to work on that um, that worksheet for you. So I'm already working on... Uh, some uh, a blog post and some and some uh, breakdowns for uh, similar to how you calculate with you know the length of your series and and how um, you know how that applies to your actual you know revenue versus just the sale on your first book etc. So um, you know one of the things we're really trying to do is uh, there's not a lot of education out there really you know, dialed into the data behind Amazon PPC for authors. Um, and so while we wait to get some of this data and get some of this, um, you know, get some of that other stuff in the platform, we want to fill the gap with education. Um, and so, you know, that's why, you know, we're doing things like this to try to, uh, 
you know, first of all, learn from my perspective. You know, I'm new to the author, to the author game. You know, my specialty is really in physical products and, and, and that side of things. Um, so we want to learn, find out what questions are out there and then see how we can answer them, you know, from the data and analytics side of things. Yeah. Just on this point, um, Mark's been using Presters on for a while. And we've been chatting to you yeah. guys. How important is it to you to work with the author world? It's quite a distinctly different part of Amazon, although it uses the same platform. Uh, there are variations in the way it uses. Is it is, is this a, an important part of the future for you guys? It's a gigantic part of the future. Um, we actually had Amazon reach out to us um, a few months ago and they said, hey, you've got a bunch of authors on your platform. What do you do to support them? And our honest response was you know, not much. Um, uh, you know, authors found us and used us and dealt with the shortcomings, but not because we were actively reaching out to help. Um, and... When we got to talking to Amazon, it looks like Amazon is starting to come around to try to support authors more on the PPC side of things. And we're, we work very, very closely with Amazon and their API team. And so we kind of said, well, how can we help? Um, and so it's a big initiative for us. Um, you know, we now have a Facebook group where you can hop in and, and, you know, throw feedback in there, ask questions. You know, we're working on training programs specifically for authors. Um, and so it's a huge part of our development. You know, just uh, the other day, I was actually listening to this podcast and uh, hearing about um, how important click through rate was. Um, and most of our kind of actions and triggers are on sales and conversions because that's what makes sense for products but that doesn't necessarily make sense for authors so um because you know if you get high click through rate even if you're not getting a physical you know an actual sale you might be getting a high read through rate so uh we're actually going back and you know you have a direct if you go to the author group or, or, or you message us, you've got a direct line to us who then have a direct line to the developers. So I've actually added onto our product roadmap, the ability to set a, a click through rate threshold in order to promote and move keywords because we don't currently have that. And so not only is it important for us just from an education standpoint, we're actually going to you know, have our development roadmap be created with author needs in mind. And so the more we talk to authors, the more we understand your pain points, we're actually going to drive our product in that direction for you. Yeah, well, that's superb. And that fits into the philosophy that we're learning from people like Janet Margo at the moment is to really focus on impressions and click-through rate, knowing that there's a conversion level that you can always leave the sales to the, their own devices because they will follow mm -hmm. if you get the top of the waterfall right uh, and funny enough i was thinking we'll come on to um, i'm going to go through this bit by bit in a minute because it's an interesting platform and it's not too complicated at all actually to use um, uh, but i'm going to come on to the suggestions page and actually i found myself toggling backwards and forwards because i wanted to see the click-through rate before i made a decision about accepting and that's actually a little bit fiddly at that time because you don't see the bid suggestion and the click-through rate at the same time. So that might be my little bit of feedback for you, which I'll post into the group at some point. Absolutely. Do you click the little show data yes. button? Is that, yeah. And then you can apply it on the list. So you can apply it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, look, uh, we're on this analytics page at the moment where we're seeing the campaigns. And uh, you mentioned at the beginning this, uh, this bid, in fact, it's just reloading the data at the moment so it's gone for me at the moment but the toggle you get at campaign level to uh, adjust your bids automatically just talk to me about that because obviously on the one hand we're telling people to be on top of their data and to know everything on the other hand here is a toggle switch at campaign level to do stuff automatically so I think people would want to understand exactly what it does yeah and and again you know our plan is to do the 90 percent um, you know, we, there are some tools out there that want to completely take over your account. And, and we don't think that's a good way to do it because you as an account manager, you know, you as an author and a self publisher understand your book, you know, your market way better than our algorithm ever will. Um, and so you're always going to have more context. And we very much suggest that you're in it, you know, at least once a week. Our goal is to get you from, you know, doing two hours of work a day in Amazon PPC to hopefully only be doing, you know, one or two hours a week. Um, and if you, you know, you look at that and you measure how much your time is worth, you know, hopefully that's where the value proposition is. In terms of, you know, the actual nitty gritty behind it, the algorithm is is going to track towards your, your target, target ACoS. So we're going to look at an individual keyword, 
within your campaign and say you're, you know, just to make the math easy, say your ACOS target is 100%. If that individual keyword within the campaign that has a target of 100% is above the ACOS target, so say it's 150%, then we will typically bring the bid down because we're saying, hey, you know, you're above your ACOS target. Let's reduce the CPC on this. Let's try, you know, to get it underneath the target. Conversely, if you're below the, the ACOS target for a keyword, you're running at 20%, then we'll actually raise the bid because we'll say, hey, you've got meat on the bone here. You've got room to try to bring in more impressions. And so, you know, hopefully we can drive more volume through this successful keyword so that you can continue to get, you know, more impressions, more clicks, you know, ultimately more conversions, but also, you know, more read through. So that toggle switch, the bid automation there, uh, how does that interact with the suggestions page where you get keyword by keyword um, bid suggestions, which you can then press a button and apply? Yeah, so it, the automation applies it for you. So if you if you were to automate all of your campaigns, then the suggestions tab would actually be blank okay. for, for your bids. So what you're seeing when you haven't automated is exactly what the system is doing in the background if you were to automate. Okay, so you have a campaign level, you can toggle that switch and everything your algorithm's finding out based on what you've put in there in terms of what you're trying to achieve, it will automatically do those bid adjustments. However, you can leave that toggle off. You can go into the suggestions tab and let's do that now actually, because I've been through all my suggestions and either poor, you know, um, rested them or applied them. So there's nothing there now for me. But um, actually, if I take off the available filter, can do that. I'm going to see them. So you can go to suggestions level. You can literally look at, here's a keyword extinction series. I can see my current bid is 68 cents. I spent $4.66 on it. If I do data toggle, I can see the click-through rate on it, which is 0.73, which is good. Uh, but then I can make a decision on your recommendation. So you're saying, as I said, I've been through mine, but typically what I was reading earlier is um, that your ACOS is 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 low on this. So we're typically, we're gonna suggest you lower that bid. And usually it was within, within a few pence of what I was going for anyway. A couple of them are quite significantly different. And I had noticed actually one of the great benefits of having this kind of dashboard display, a couple of my keywords were out of control. I was like four or $5 bids on them. I don't know how that happened, but that's the sort of thing that you notice when you start looking at this level, which is again, to come back to the beginning, not the easiest thing to do with the Amazon ads platform, it involves downloading reports and opening up spreadsheets and so on. So yeah, there's some benefit for me. Absolutely. And you can actually customize the bid right there, right? So there's a little spot where you can edit the bid suggestion. And so that's nice. So if you don't agree with us in an instance, you can just change it to whatever you would have wanted it to be. And then, you know, I actually suggest don't automate at first so that you can keep an eye on us. And then, you know, if you find yourself, there's a little bulk actions uh, button up at the top. And if you find yourself just sort of mindlessly going through and applying in bulk, because after a couple weeks, you're like, oh yeah, I trust presses on, I trust their suggestions. Then you say, okay, maybe it's time you know, to automate because I've got a comfort level with the suggestions that they've been making. Yeah, I think I will get there because I suspect what I did in the first couple of days using Prestas on is I spotted those outliers that were clearly wrong bidding $4. And your suggestion was to reduce the bid a bit to maybe $3, but that's still way too high for me. And that's because, yeah. because of where the bid was. So there's the sort of things I need to spot. Once I finessed that, everything's more or less in my ballpark. I imagine well, we'll see what the results are, but I imagine I'm going to be uh, using more of the automation process, which I guess is the point, right? Absolutely, absolutely, because we want to give you time back. And just, you know, a another little function is, is uh, if you go up to the profile level, level settings where you've set your, your ACOS, there's also a bid constraint uh, uh, on the profile level that you can set. So if you never want it to go above, a you know, a dollar, or I guess in your case, it would be a a pound, right? Yeah, um, right. Actually, my, uh, I think my dashboard is in dollars. So right, if it's in the US, yeah. so um, but so you can set it uh, so that it can never go above, you know, a certain, um, a certain, you know, threshold. Yeah, and is that that's global as well? I can see that in the settings, but can you do that at campaign level as well? Because it might be different between the box set and an individual book. No, currently that bid constraint is only on the profile level, just to make sure that, you know, you can catch everything um, and you don't have anything going, you know, completely crazy, but we don't have it on the campaign level yet. Okay. I'm going to put in $2. There you go. 
I don't anything going about Great. $20. And if you click that little, there's a little enforce maximum yeah. um, oh, button. And so it'll go through and change will, it. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you don't click that button, then, you know, say you manually set something to $5 because it's a special case. If you don't click that little checkbox, then it will leave it at $5. But if you click that checkbox, then we will actually enforce that maximum you just put in across the profile. Wow. Uh, probably a good place just to pause our dissection of Prestazon and tell people how much this is um, so they can factor that in. Some people will just be starting out with Amazon ads. Who is this pitched at? Is this pitched at people already running a few campaigns, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. It does take a little bit of Amazon PPC knowledge. Um, you know, as you start walking through, like you were saying, the, the UI is great and, and really intuitive, but it is deceptively complicated when you really get into the weeds. But that's also why we're really developing um, the education program, um, especially for authors to help them kind of jump in. Um, but the original question was pricing. Uh, so we actually Again, with authors in mind, um, not just for authors, but we kind of catered it to them a little bit. Um, we're now offering a $50 a month um, tier. And so um, our standard tier starts at $100 a month um, and then kind of goes up based on your spend. Um, but specifically for authors, it's called Presses on Core. Um, and if your spend is below $10,000 uh, $10, a month, um, you are... Uh, able to use presses on core and it basically has all of our core functionality. So you still get the bid optimization daily and it does your top thousand um, keywords. You still have access to the rules. Um, it just runs once a week rather than daily. Um, and then you still have access to all of our analytics. Um, and so, you know, saves us a little bit on the processing uh, side of things, which is, you know, why we're able to offer at the slightly lower price, but it still kind of has that core functionality. And then ideally, as you scale, you know, hopefully everyone's going to hit that 10000 uh, that $10,000 spend marker, and then they can move up um, into, you know, the full, the full platform as yeah. well. Although I would suggest that you will probably want to move up before you get to $10,000 spend, I'd imagine. I mean, we're going to hit with our little uh, fuse books. I think we're going to hit um, $2,500 this month, maybe a bit more on ad spend. And I'm getting to the point where the $100 suddenly looks like a, a small, small percentage of that to have the extra uh, bits you get, the daily changes, for instance. Absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely benefit to upgrading, even if you're in the the, the $5,000 to $10,000 range as well. And we should say, Mark and I will give the link out after this, that you've done us a, a good deal for listeners of this very podcast. So there's, I think it's 50% um, off your first month. Is that right? You're so, exactly correct. Yeah. And I have the code if you want it. Yeah, you can you can give that out and we'll reiterate yeah, it at the can... end and put it in the show notes. Yeah, it's SPF show. So, SPF show. There you uh, go. SPF show. Um, excellent. Okay, so that's the 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 main page, and we've talked about the the suggestions. Um, the way this works, because it's quite interesting to me how this works. I was expecting to create a lot a user and login here, but actually, you give it your Amazon credentials, so it's it's closely linked to that account. And one thing I noticed right at the beginning, which is just the way that Amazon works, but you do have to have a separate Prestazon account for each territory. So I typically advertise in the UK and the US. I would have to have two subscriptions and two ways of logging into Prestazon as I do with Amazon for those two territories. Yeah, you can actually link, if you have the same email user linked to those different accounts, then you will be linked to all of them and you can actually go into a little drop down in the upper right of the application and switch between them. But they are separate, um, they are separate subscriptions. Um, and it's just how, you know, it's, we have to make a delineation somewhere and that's how Amazon manages their, uh, their permissions. Um, but you're exactly correct. We use login with Amazon. So there's no, um, you don't have to worry about us having permissions or, or, you know, in terms of the data, all of the security stuff, all the permission stuff is handled on the Amazon side. So, you know, it's just a little bit, it's a little nice in terms of peace of mind, yeah. um, you know, that, that we've got that connection. Now I haven't got um, got this far yet, but I was wondering about going re reviewing the decisions that it's made because I went through a lot of keywords and either paused them or asked them, applied the suggested bid or made a manual change. Can I review the changes that have been made? 
yeah, there's a change history tab um, right next to the suggestions tab, I believe. And um, so you can go through there and you can look at all of the changes and it will also tell you where the changes were made or um, what the automation reason was. So, you know, you might see, you might see, oh, why did I, you know, why did Presson make this $10 change or something like that? And then you'll look and you'll go, oh no, that was me in the Amazon yeah. interface. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so there is a change history so you can go in and, and review. So tell us about the company a bit, uh, Dirk. How long have you been involved in it and when did it start? Yeah, so uh, Presson's been around for well, almost four years now. Um, and the way that it was started, um, Ben and Dana and Chris, the co-founders, uh, were actually selling on Amazon. And their day job were, the, you know, they were software developers by day working at a software company. And so they were doing this as a side gig and they were developing Amazon tools for themselves where they were like, oh, Amazon doesn't do this well, this is a pain, so I'm going to develop this tool to make it easier. And then eventually the first product was the bid optimization where, you know, they made that and were like, wow, this works really well. You know, this could be a product in and of itself. Um, you know, it's sort of like the 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 people that were selling jeans and, and uh, you know, panning bowls and things at the gold rush, like, right? Those were yes. the ones that, yeah. that really took off. So um, so they, they were like, oh, well, we can actually make this um, a product. And so, you know, they developed it, they productized it, um, and they started going out um, and, and working with agencies and, and working with direct clients. My background, I actually started in Amazon PPC, or not Amazon PPC, but PPC in general, actually in hospitality. Um, I started as a hotel general manager, and PPC is huge in the revenue management um, side of things for hotels. And so um, that was my, you know, almost a decade ago now. Um, that's how I kind of started in Amazon or in PPC. And then I moved over um, to work in manufacturing. I was working for a, an electronics manufacturer and running the U.S. operations and supply chain. Um, and so heavily involved in Amazon, both on the FBA side and the supply chain side, and then on the, the Amazon PPC and advertising side. Um, and so I came to Presses On um, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and, uh, I still remember about a month in, we had a, a company wide, uh, meet and greet. And I looked at Ben and I said, you know, in six months, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the strategy guy. I'm going to be the expert. And everyone laughed because, you know, Ben has a great reputation in the space and he speaks at conferences and, and all this. And I was there at, for a month, the young whippersnapper saying, uh, I'm going to take your seat. And, you know, almost six months to the day was the first time that I really stumped Ben with, uh, with an interesting strategy. And so, you know, it's been, it's, it's such a cool, interesting problem. Um, you know, no one has a silver bullet for Amazon PPC, whether it's on the product space or, you know, or on the, the author space. Um, and, you know, if someone did, then everyone else would be out of business. And so it's a really fun, interesting problem. And what what we see both on the product side and especially on the author side is, you know, I'm a math guy. I got my degree in mathematics. Ben's a data scientist by trade. And there's not a lot of analytics people and math people doing Amazon PPC on the product side. It's all marketing people and creatives that are just like, oh, I have to do this advertising stuff. For authors, you know, you want to write, you know, that's what, that's, that's your goal. This is, this is a means to an end, you know, you do it because it's, because it's needed. And so we want to fill in that gap and we basically want to be, we want to be the data scientist, you know, in order to help you again, get back to what you're doing and not having to focus as much of your time on Amazon PPC. I like your ambition. Hey, you know, you got to You got to yeah. shoot for the stars, yeah. right? Go big or go home. Um, exactly. So it's, it's good that Ben didn't just laugh and say, get rid of that guy called security. But uh, there you are. No, I think he did. <laughs> oh, he I did, think yeah. he did. I just ignored him. I just kept showing up to work. OK, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, and in, without getting too technical, no one else will be interested in this bit, but I'm kind of nerdy about this. The back end of this. So there's something called an API that every sort of platform has, which is the uh, sort of proper way to plug in and get details out of it so you, you can create an interface to it. So you could have something that manages your YouTube account and it gets stuff with the API. Is that how this works? It plugs into the API or do you have some sort of inside track with Amazon 
to link things up. Yeah, we we plug into the Amazon the Amazon advertising API, um, and so we still we do also have a really close um, connection, you know, with Amazon, and, and we deal with them um, very closely. But in terms of the actual data connection, technically speaking, um, I don't think quite anyone, but you know, even as a direct seller, you can get. Um, access to the API, but a lot of it is about how you manipulate that data. You know, just because you have the data, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's it's just there uh, in piles, and you don't know what to do with it. No, there's the, there's the magic is in the software. That, yeah, without question. Yeah. Uh, and is the um, this is uh, probably a company confidential question. I'm going to ask it anyway. Is the kind of long term strategy that Amazon at some point will think you know we should really own this. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, right now it, we're just having fun, right? You know, I, for some reason, love having Amazon PPC, you know, that's something I learned about myself is I love talking about this sort of stuff, um, all the time. So, you know, right now we're just enjoying building a really cool product and, you know, we love working with our, with our clients and, um, you know, having a close relationship with them and, you know, building solutions for them and helping them succeed, you know, we're very much in kind of a supporting role um, to help other people, uh, you know, kind of grow and do cool things. And so right now that's kind of what we're interested in doing and, um, and we're happy to do it and who knows what tomorrow brings, but you know, we're, yeah. we're going to keep doing our thing for as long as we can. Well, I think it's great. And all you can do is just make the platform incredibly useful to people and absolutely ultimately sells them more little black widgets or books or, or page reads. Um, I, and I would have thought, I would have thought at some point if I was Amazon and this was working really well and the people who use Prestas on got better results than the people who didn't, which I think is probably, in fact, I'm fairly certain is already the case. At some point, if yeah. I was Amazon, I'd be thinking, I'm going to buy this off you guys, make you guys rich and then give it to everyone. But that's, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I mean, hey, that that sounds great, but I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you'll have to have Ben on and see if you can really turn the screws on him and see what's going on. But maybe, uh, maybe Ben wants to hold it anyway to keep it. Who knows what yeah. the strategy is? Anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, you know, we we like going yeah. into work every day, you yeah. know, and so long as that's happening, you know, you can't beat that. Yeah. Well, I was surprised when I first logged on. I have to say, it's like any kind of new bit of software. You're looking at it thinking, I don't really know how this works. Have I got time to do this? It's taken me about half an hour to realize I will probably only ever adjust this level of, of detail in my Amazon ads campaigns through Prestazon. I, I already know I'm not going to be exporting spreadsheets uh, and so on, which is one of the reasons why we've asked you guys to create a mini course that goes part of our ads for authors course so uh, with a really good detailed um uh, breakdown of how to use it how to get the best out of the platform because we can see straight away there's a massive advantage to manipulating your campaigns using presters on absolutely and as i said in the beginning you know our whole idea is to be this sort of higher level um, programming language on top. So there are some settings, you know, like budget management and a few other little settings that you still have to do in the Amazon portal. But when it comes to data analysis and things like that, I mean, quite frankly, I've actually had Amazon employees reach out and say, hey, can you do a demo? Because I've heard that your visualization is really good. And we've walked through it and they go, I've never looked at our data like this, you know, yeah. because what we did was there's a lot of tools out there that are a port from Google or Facebook, and they just said, oh, well, we'll take this and we'll just put it on top of Amazon. But like I said in the very, you know, when we are talking about how we started, it started as an Amazon tool. And so we built it from the ground up with Amazon in mind, and especially the search term, um, because the search term is super important to us. It's what we make a lot of our decisions off of, because that's really the touch point with the customer, right? The, the customer doesn't know that you've got a broad match keyword on XYZ, you know, character string, right? They're just typing in what they want, you know, what they yeah. want to find. And that's the touch point. And so the secret behind what we do is we're trying to make the mapping from the keyword to the search term as close as possible. Yeah. Because that's where you're managing your bid, right? You're managing your bid on your keyword, but the search term is the touch point with the customer. Yeah. One of the things we always tell people is to think of keywords as search terms. But there's effectively, and, and sometimes they are literally a sentence. It's not a keyword. It's a, it's a badly yeah. named thing, isn't it? The keyword. It's not. Sometimes it's how do I how do I build a car? If you're selling a, a book that does that, sometimes that's your keyword. Absolutely. And the danger there is if you don't have your structure set up correctly, then the and the keyword doesn't 
match up to the search term the way you want it, then you can get into, you know, all these sort of cross paths and the data isn't, you know, it, it's not clean. And so that actually, and again, probably, you know, why we're, we're so aligned, but the point of press is on in terms of the keyword migration and our default rules and our default structure is to get that one-to-one -one relationship between a keyword and a search term so that you can think of the keyword as the search term, because if they're set up in that one-to-one -one manner, then when you change the bid on that keyword, you're directly affecting yeah. the relevant search term. Yeah, well, Mark and I think this is a bit of a game changer for us. You know, we spend quite a lot of time telling people how to uh, to download the data from the Amazon Ads platform, how to manipulate it. We teach as a session specifically of how to create a pivot table and how to use it. But that's a lot of work to go to, to get stuff that you can get at the click of a mouse key uh, here. Absolutely. And, you know, and it, it's so hard. And like you said, you know, pivot tables and things like that in order to aggregate the data. You know, we're aggregating the data right there. You know, if you go to the search term explorer, for instance, in analytics, and then you click a little breakdown expansion for keywords, you can see not only the search term, but all the different targets where that search term is firing and all the data behind all of those different targets. So you can see, oh, you know, on, this search term is working really well for book four, but it's not working for book one, maybe I should just pause it for all the books except for book four, because that's what's really driving, you know, great click through or something like that. And so, you know, you can really dive deep and get really granular and it's it's just super valuable. Yeah. And uh, you do get a lot of stuff out of Amazon. It's not immediately obvious when you're on the ads dashboard for the reasons we've discussed. But once you start exporting stuff, you can see not not the keywords you've come up with, you can see the keywords that somebody typed in that led them to eventually buy your book. Exactly, yeah, you're seeing what the customer is actually typing in and you can glean so much information from that. And then, you know, you go even beyond that and you can see, you know, for instance, like ASIN targeting and, and, and looking at, oh, you know, someone was looking at this book and they ended up buying my book and that leads you to, you know, you know, going through and, and targeting, whether it be competitors or it's not really competitors in your space, right? It's more complementary, yes. you know, topics and things like that. And so, you know, you can, you can see all of that within the data um, and then build, you know, most of my day is building complex strategies around all this data to basically take what is showing up in the sales history and then transferring that into a, a strategy moving forward. Yeah. Do you have any plans to expand PrestaZone to cover some of the other advertising platforms that people use, such as BookBub ads or Facebook ads? We've thought about it. Right now, we're really focused on Amazon, um, and there's still so much to expand just in Amazon. You know, I mean, I you think of all all of the things because now you know now that I've really immersed myself in the author space, you know, I'm building strategies on my side on kind of like the thought strategic philosophical side but then every time i run into a roadblock i'm i've got a whole list for the developers of you know like the 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 click through rate trigger for rules and you know obviously if we get read through rate um you know working on some of the calculations to link asins um by series possibly and 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 then you know kind of working around some of the restrictions that authors have right because there's certain author ad types um where uh, you can only have one asin per ad group um, yeah. Right. And so, you know, revamping strategies in order to do that. And so, you know, this is a whole growth area for us. And so we're just really excited to fill this space and try to optimize it for our platform as much as possible. And then maybe one day you can you can twist our arm to move to Facebook. But right now there's so much, uh, you know, there, it, there's a whole feast in front of us just on yeah. the Amazon side. Yeah, and I think I think the Amazon platform is the one that needs this the most. I would say um, uh, out of out of that bunch. Um, yeah, the I mean the Ku thing is is an issue. We we hear rumors all the time that they are going to be. I'm sure they are without question going to be adding Ku revenues into the dashboard at some point. We don't know when. Hopefully this year. Um, read through. I don't know whether that will ever be something that Amazon gives up. Uh, even though they could probably work it out. Well, they can definitely work it out better than we can. But maybe at some point down the line, there would be a space for us to put in our read through values into Prestazon and, and allow your algorithms to factor that in. Yeah, there's um, 
we have, uh, you know, sort of pie in the sky goals. Um, and one of them is to be able to integrate different uh, data sources. So, you know, from the product side, we think of things like COGS, right? Your cost of sales and, and, and a lot of stuff like that. And then, you know, from the author side, it could be things like read through rate, things like you know, read revenue, things like, um, you know, if, if you've got the the tool to calculate your your total sale value for book one or whatnot, you know, we might be able to to integrate that sort of stuff. So more of a pie in the sky goal, but definitely something that we've thought about. Superb. Well, Dirk, uh, I think uh, I've probably come across as a bit of a fan. I am a convert to the platform, uh, definitely. Uh, I do realize that $50 a month for people just starting out, they probably do want to be downloading those spreadsheets and, uh, dare I say, creating the old pivot table. But that's a good thing to do when you start off anyway, I think. I absolutely. I mean, you know, the best conversations I have are with people that have kind of immersed themselves a little bit and, and gotten everything and the underlying data so that when they come over to a platform like Press is on, they understand what we're doing. And so then, you know, the questions are more nuanced. The strategy is more, you know, is, is kind of more ingrained. Um, and so I definitely think when you're just starting out, doing a lot of that stuff is really valuable to get an understanding. And then, you know, then we'll start doing the work for you once you understand, you know, the underlying actions behind it. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. It's the same as employing somebody to do something you really need to know the complete ins and Absolutely. outs of it in order to be an effective manager of that person, uh, which is effectively what's happening here. You're, uh, you work for me, Dirk. I, I live to serve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, you need to put your wizard hat back on as we, uh, we conclude the interview because uh, I think you need to go formal again and go out into the streets. There All you right. are. I think you're in New York. Are you? Are you? I am, yeah. I'm in a suburb just nor north of New York City. Okay. And so is the company done remotely as is the way things work these days? Yeah, we've we've always been 100% remote. So the only difference with the quarantine is I've got an eight month old baby. So no daycare Ooh. has been uh, a bit of a challenge. Oh, I can only imagine that is hard work yeah. at that point. Uh, is yeah. uh, he or she crawling yet? Yes, she just started crawling. So she's all over the place. I you haven't heard her during this uh, during this recording session, which means that is a Herculean feat yeah. for my wife. Uh, we wouldn't have minded. apparently kept her quiet. Do, th <laughs> do thank your wife. And I remember the point where they become mobile. Everything changes around the yeah, house. Yeah, so. it's definitely been eye opening. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> well, look, good luck with that. Dirk. That's a really important uh, life thing for you. And uh, thank you for coming on talking about Presters on. We are going to be uh, friends, I think, and colleagues uh, for the for the foreseeable future. Absolutely. I, I look forward to it. This is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There we go. So you're using Prestazon, Mark, using it pretty routinely now, built into your, your daily trawl through your campaigns? Uh, daily or by every other day. So I, mean, I, I just looked at it before we, we hopped on and it um, picked out. It is, it is good. It will, it, it will pick out um, just on, as you said before the interview, on a surface level, just being able to pull down all of the search terms that readers are using to search your, to, you know, to find books and then those search terms converting into sales of your book. It makes it very much more easy than it is on Amazon, um, especially if you've got more than one account. So you don't need to get the, the spreadsheets. It will pull those down for you. It makes it a lot easier to do that. And you can also, you can see patterns of which search terms are working. You can see the ACOS against keywords and search terms. Um, or color coded and you can set the ACOS target to whatever you want. So it's very, it's very good at presenting the information and the automation side of it is interesting as well. So it will, it will look at your bids and it will suggest, um, up at several hundred. I mean, I just clicked through, I think a thousand suggestions on one of my accounts and it moved some bids up because they weren't getting impressions. It moved some other bids up because there was uh, there was more space within the uh, the margin that I'd set it to generate more sales, um, and it moves some down if it feels that the ACOS is too high above the target, or it's it's just not uh, the clicks too expensive, or conversions not right. It will move those clicks down again, which which is great. And the other thing it can do again automatically is it will find um, the search terms that readers are using to then go and buy your books. And it will pick out the ones that have hit certain targets. So the obvious one is it's made a sale or maybe it's made five sales. And it will take those keywords and put them into a new manual campaign. So you can have automatic campaigns running 
Pressures on will pick out the uh, keywords that are selling in those automatic campaigns or the search terms that are selling, put them into uh, its own um, like manual campaign, and then you can look at trying to optimize that. And it will do that automatically. So it, it's you know it's it's interesting. It's got tons of potential. I think it's it's pretty cool just for the basic features and some of the more advanced features. It's a little bit, a few gremlins now and again, but the, the advanced features I think have lots of potential. And we've definitely got their attention now. I mean, we we um, we were on a call the other day with with them, weren't we, James? And mm. um, I think I don't know how many people have enrolled through after finding out through SPF because we've got a really good little course in ads for authors. Um, but I think it's uh, three figures. I think at, at least you know we we'd brought a lot of um, authors into their sphere who might not have heard of them before. So we're we're quite pleased about that. Yeah, there is an entry level like all these things, depending on how much you're making, there'll be a point at which uh, it's going to work for you. Certainly in terms of if you value your time, um, I think that that entry level will happen sooner rather than later. Uh, but you can trial it for free for 15 days, I believe the offer is, if you use the code SPF show when you get to Prestazon, Prestazon app.prestazon.com and sign up. And like you, Mark, I've been through, I used it this morning, actually went through my suggested bids and uh, it's quite nice you can so your suggested changes that mark was just describing i had a couple of pages of them actually so i picked out the ones that i wanted to do slightly differently or i either wanted to ignore it uh, for whatever reason or change it and then the rest once i was happy with them you can bulk do them uh, and that's a very very quick way of making it changes but the search term function which i sort of discovered with dirk in the call is fantastic to pick out those magic search terms you don't realize are buried in your campaign with really high click-through rates like 20 and 30 percent and are yielding sales then you can sort of see them at a, a glance and start bumping them up putting them front and center good well uh yeah we do, do like a bit of automation if you're watching on youtube God. i did my robot uh which is great and <laughs> if you're interested also i should mention um you talked about acos which is a bit of an interesting area when it comes to amazon ads because all is not what you see with amazon you can have an acos score that looks like it's making a loss on Amazon ads, but in the real world, it's making a profit for you because it doesn't take into account things like read through and crucially Kindle unlimited page reads. Uh, I've actually written a blog on my experience discovering all this and uh, moving the profit bar up uh, month by month on our little imprint, Fuse Books, and that blog should go, should be live as we speak, Marks. And that does, I think, I think goes some way to explaining what I mean when I say it may look like you're making a loss, but actually you're making a profit using benchmarking and so on. So you can find that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's well worth a read. It's a good, a good blog that sets out. I know I'm Phrase. phrases uh, Phrase like, like hen's teeth, but no, yeah. it's very good. It's definitely worth a read. I mean, um, yeah, and, and just looking at the ACOS is not necessarily the well. It's a good, it's a good like, indication, but it's not really the determining factor as to whether an ad should be switched off or not there are other things to take into account and james does go through it in a nice thorough blog post that that you should have a look at i'm gonna have to go and sit down i can balance it out if you like oh what are you gonna have a go at me for well i, I can come oh, yeah. up with lots yeah. well what it seems like a good time to wrap it up i'll take the praise going into the <laughs> weekend i've got a pubs open tomorrow and mark has said i did something right uh, there you go. Life doesn't get any better. Um, good. Well, I want to say thanks to Dirk and Ariel, the team at Prestazon, and Ben, who's uh, the big man, the big guy at Prestazon, who we've uh, we've chatted to for the first time this week. And it's I think it's a tool that we'll keep uh, very much um, in with. We'll be using it and uh, see how that develops. At the moment, they're all ears. So there's a Prestazon authors group specifically for, for authors using the platform, and they are all ears to how you're using it, what your feedback is. Uh, they'd love to hear you. So make sure you do join that Facebook group if you do get involved in Prestazon. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much indeed to Dirk. Thank you very much indeed, Mark, for joining us on this Friday evening. Um, stay away from the pubs, go on your bike, um, stay safe and all the rest of it. Uh, and I'm not allowed to play cricket. That was the big thing that was supposed to have been announced today is recreational cricket. Um, but that's been kiboshed by Boris. So I'm unhappy because I want to go and play cricket. But there you go. I'll have to, I can't even drink because you've told me that's dangerous. Nothing left. I have. Uh, and I'm just looking at our clocks. We need to wind up, James, before we, we, uh, I'm our camera stop I'm, I'm working. I'm waffling now, so I'm going to wind up. In fact, all that leaves me to say is that it's a uh, goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.